Hey Archics, welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing important questions related to Beer Lambert's law. Solving these questions is super easy and it hardly involves two or three formulae. So you should definitely not skip this part for any exam. Now, without much further ado, let's understand the Beer Lambert's law, the concepts of absorbance and transmittance. <music> So now the Beer Lambert's law basically can be summarized in one formula that is A is equal to epsilon Cl. Now, what are all these terms? A here stands for absorbance. Okay. Epsilon is the molar extinction coefficient. Okay. Molar extinction coefficient. And C here is concentration of the solution and L here is the path length. Now, if you are wondering why do we use this Beer Lambert's law, basically it is used to calculate the absorbance of a colored solution. It is commonly applied to the calorimetric method of estimation of, sub, of analyte, the concentration of analyte. Okay, so using this formula, you can calculate the concentration if you know the absorbance of the particular colored solution. Okay, so we use this formula. Please write down what each term means. And let's directly start discussing questions because that's how the concepts will be built up. So first, let us move on to this question asked in gate 2017 for a whole two marks. So the question says a solution containing GTP has a molar extinction coefficient of this much. So I told you what is molar co extinction coefficient? Epsilon. At a given wavelength, the concentration of GTP is this. So we don't need to do anything with what story they are making. Just fill up what the symbols are. So this is concentration C. They are asking you the absorbance. Okay, A equal to question mark for solution, you know, one can, this is a printing mistake, it is one centimeter cubic at the same wavelength. So, simply the formula is A is equal to epsilon Cl. You've got epsilon, how much is epsilon? 1.55 into 10 raised to 4. Concentration should be in mole, so that's 1.2900 into 10 raised to minus 5 into one path length always has to be in centimeter. These are some things you need to understand. Okay, now you can simply solve this by simple mathematics, multiply. And when you multiply, what answer you get will be the final answer. So this is as simple as it gets. Okay, you can pause this and solve it on your own at some other point. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This question is slightly different. Let us see what the question says. It says a beam of light passes through a one centimeter of a colored solution. So what will one centimeter be? Obviously, they have given you the, yes, path length L of a colored solution. 80% of incident light is transmitted. Okay. So first case, they are saying the path length they have kept as one centimeter. At that particular point, 50% of the incident light is transmitted. Okay. If the incident light passes through two centimeter. So now they are increasing the path length to two centimeter using the same solution. The percentage of transmittance or the percentage of transmitted light. So this is T1. Let us say this is T2. So they are asking you how much will T2 be? Now, we don't know any direct relationship between T and L, right? But we know a relationship between absorbance and path length. We know that absorbance is directly proportional to the path length. So now we want to try and convert this transmittance into absorbance. So imagine there is like there are two terms. One is incidence, 
incident light let us say and one is the transmitted light okay so a source is going to shine some light on the cuvet that has your solution right some light is going to be absorbed by this and the remaining is going to be transmitted are you understanding what happens you have a light source the light is incident on the solution some of it will be absorbed the remaining will be transmitted correct so this is the incident light so what is the percentage it will be 100% light is incident of that if i'm telling you that 50% is transmitted then can you tell me what happens to the remaining 50 obviously the remaining 50 is absorbed right so 50% of the light has been absorbed so can i say to calculate absorbance one it will be 100 that is the incident light minus the one that has been transmitted so this is 50 so we got the absorbance one now life is very simple we know that it's directly proportional so a2 upon a1 will be equal to l2 upon l1 therefore a2 will be a1 into l2 upon l1 so l2 is 2 cm l1 is 1 cm absorbance is 50 so this is 100 Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I wrote it fifty for some reason. It's eighty. So here, just the difference will be that instead of fifty, we'll write eighty. So this is eighty percent. Here it will be eighty. So this is twenty, right? So here twenty. Now twenty into two will be forty. So forty percent of the light has been absorbed. But look carefully. have they asked you what percentage is absorbed no they have asked you what is transmitted so if this much is absorbed and 100% was incident then how much has been absorbed 100 minus 40 and that is 60 so where is 60 yes we have option a 60% so this is how simply you can calculate right now there is another question which is slightly different from the two that we previously discussed so let us see how this one is different now this question says a solution absorbs 20% of incident light very good so absorbance is directly given in a cuvet of path length 1 okay l is given the amount of light transmitted by the same solution so they are keeping the solution same and they are asking you to calculate the amount of light transmitted but this time they have changed the path length and they have kept it to 3 so now they are asking you tell me how much will be the transmitted light okay so what they are asking you tell the amount of light transmitted if the path length is Three at this particular point. Now you know that we directly can't find the transmittance from the path length. We don't have a direct relation here, so we have to go through finding absorbance. So you have to find absorbance, right? Now, what is the relationship between absorbance and transmittance? So absorbance is log of one by transmittance. So this is a new thing I'm introducing over here. a is equal to log 1 by t absorbance is log of 1 by transmittance so here i need to find absorbance you know the only formula to find absorbance is a a is equal to epsilon cl now because the solution is the same we know that this is going to remain the same epsilon and c so what is only varying is a and l so just by using this you will come to know. but again the twist is that everything is not directly given to you so you need to find certain things right so first let us see what they have given you they have given you solution is absorbing 20% so can you tell me how much it is transmitting very good 
transmitting will be 100 minus the absorbing that is 80 percent so we know 80 percent of light is transmitted so what is the transmittance transmittance has to be found so transmittance is given by the formula i upon i zero so what is i i is the light that has been transmitted transmitted light and i zero is the light that is incident so we know incident is 100, transmitted is 80. So how much does this come to be? 0.8. So we got the value of T. Now you can put it in this formula. So what is absorbance? Log of 1 by 0.8. Now log of 1 by 0.8. So first you do 1 by 0.8. That comes out to be 1.25. Now log of 1.25 is 0 0.0969. Which we can approximately take because they are telling us to anyways round off. So it will be 0 0.1. Is it correct? That is the absorbance. Now I have found the absorbance when the path length is 1. So I have to find now when the path length has changed. So the relationship is absorbance is inverse, directly proportional to path length. So A2 will be what? They have tripled the path length. So absorbance of the second one will also be triple. So A2 will be 3 into 0 0.1 which we now found. So that is 0 0.3. Finally, after getting the new absorbance, you can get the transmittance by this formula. That is by taking anti-log of A. That is 1 by T. So anti-log of 0 0.3 equal to 1 by T. Therefore, what is the anti-log? It comes out to be 0 0.5. So there is 50% transmitted. So the answer to this is 50. Hopefully this video was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.